I, I guess, you know, there's always um, times where you're just up to here and you have no time for anything else. And basically, you know, if I always um, been in situations where they've been really sticky and my past experience, I learned um, from my mistakes and got through those um, speed bumps because I, I knew um, the outcome and how to um, adjust myself where I have time, you know, basically. Uh, I figure out how to um, transform um, the way I work, my work habits are and figure out the speed bumps and try to connect and communicate with and try to explain to them about the, you know, what it takes in order to get it done and correctly at the first time, instead of it mm -hmm. being rushed and um, having mistakes. So, yeah. and then it become costly and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Um, do you, I'd love to hear a time when you were kind of unsure what a client wanted and, you know, it was really nebulous. Like how, how did you handle that situation? Oh, you know, that happens all the time. I tell you this one quick story that I had a client who had a technology and it totally sounded over the phone and video different from what he had explained it in person <laughs> and, and it was so excited that I, I drove all night to go see him um, in Stockton and basically um, when I got there it was totally different from what I what I had a vision and mm -hmm. and and I'm sad that you know from this day I'm sad that I didn't push him forward to the right direction um, because he had the same technology as Snapchat. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, the same technology. I was like, oh my gosh, like when I, when I think about, and the way he was going to market it was through, um, through CEOs. And mm. like, um, I told him, I said, first off, CEOs are usually baby boomers and baby boomers don't make video. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, so I and oh boy, and I I just felt so bad that, you know, and he had the technology where it the, you know, the video or picture disappeared. Um, there, am I losing you? Oh, um, there you are. Um Yeah, maybe I think I think some, it could have been mine. I'm not sure. Okay, there we okay. are. Um, there we go. Yeah. All right. There was something, <laughs> some 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 glitch in the interface here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but we heard, Snapchat heard, and they were trying to do that. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. But all right. But yeah, that that was my. Um, little story and intuition and I you know I wish I was older and could told him like you know it, this would be cool with um, the younger generation um, mm -hmm. and I wish I had like the language to yeah to go about that um, back then but um, but we still got it started off where it is today um, although it didn't um, totally it got actually bought by another um, Verizon, so but it's, it wasn't bad after all. So, um. got it. Okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's so interesting that like it's it sounds like you've been in you know mergers and acquisitions as well, kind of hearing about the different tech spaces that you've done. And I know that we're a little over over time. Do you have uh -oh. about five more minutes? Yeah, I think we'll yeah. I didn't. I totally forgot about it. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Good. That's a, that's a good experience here. Um, tell me about a time when you were working toward a goal or a deadline or release date when something unexpected happened that threw things off. Um, what, ha what happened and what did you do? Oh, okay. This is, this is um, a fun one and an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And it was a migration that we did um, with Salesforce to um, HubSpot. 
and basically the you know the, of course when migrations happen it doesn't happen nicely so um, my experience before because I was in IT help desk a long time ago and I noticed that when something um, when a new um, system doesn't work you revert back to the legacy system um, until you um, during business during the peak hours um, mm -hmm. so what we did we reverted back um, to Salesforce until we figure out all the you know all the hiccups from the migration that didn't roll over to the new system so yeah. um, and then you go you go in there and roll it out actually on a Friday or a Thursday so you know when people are a little bit relaxed and not really looking at their computer and stuff like mm -hmm. that not on a Monday or Tuesday or <laughs> kind of Wednesday <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, exactly yeah. that's so, a smart thing to do we actually just migrated and we can, I can go into that just real quickly about kind of where blast X is in the space um, because we just went through the migration of a whole website um, because in the past we just finished rebranding we were blessed analytics and marketing for a, a long time they've you know, they've been in business we've been in business for 24 years now and kind of had many iterations and this newest iteration um, which is the one that the one that we're sticking with for now here um, <laughs> is Blastex Consulting and we've been doing consulting this entire time but we really are shifting our model from away from that kind of pure play into the digital experience space, customer experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all the things that you've been doing, thinking holistically, still having that analytics and marketing background, mm -hmm. you know, doing some of those core services, but definitely having more of a forward facing consulting space. And so our website was Blast AM before, and now it's Blast X. And yeah. as you know, so many systems are connected when it's an internal company and you have everything yeah. that needs to go to blastx.com now. <laughs> Exactly. So quite <laughs> tense for our <laughs> IT department. Um, yeah. And then uh, tell me about a time when you it, it demonstrated resiliency at work. Um, I guess, you know, when, um, you know, when stuff hits the fan, um, when um, deadlines are not met um, and you know, management and upper management are really angry. Um, I I could come in and soothe the situation um, from a standpoint where I could communicate with them to you know build up a um, you know a um, I guess a soft skill where I I could you know help the organization. Um, find the best solution very quickly. Um, and that's just being around different developers and their workflows and figuring out how to plug in things into developers workflow where they could get it done very quickly and basically have like a whole template ready for them um, where they could just plug it in real quick and um, mm -hmm. and then figure out what, you know, what, because now I guess, Developers are, um, some of them are um, finicky, you could say. <laughs> and, you know, if you could find that right time of, of their peak um, brain power to um, put in that project where if it's behind schedule and get it done really quickly. And that's just my past experience I had working with tons of developers um, and getting to know how to communicate with them to get things done and very quickly too if it's if it's under pressure um, and I'm familiar with you know their their lifestyle and their workflows and the way they um, connect on online and how they connect with the workplace so basically i um, you know I could resolve things real quickly um, just my previous experience of technology you know and um, development I, mm -hmm. <clears throat> since being in IT, um, I worked in like long ago, I, you know, in college and 
um, high school, I was that IT person who worked the midnight oil, like midnight <laughs> oil shift, and you get to see things done during the nighttime. And mm. yeah, and things are done during the nighttime when the workplace is, um, you know, is well, when the system is slow or not impacted. If it's during the day when everyone's on it and things of that nature, and there's all like, um, you know, a lot of anguish if things are not working properly during the day. So hopefully there's always a, um, a we call it a loopy loop, uh, something <laughs> that <laughs> that fixes the problem <laughs> temporarily until you can yeah. find a bigger um, solution for that problem. Absolutely. And so uh, real quick, I have a, just a couple more questions and I promise I will let you go, my friend. Um, so tell me a little bit about, you worked in a lot of startups. So I do see a lot of startups um, in this space. Are you open to working with larger scale companies? Kind of um, like, what does that look like? Does that still excite you? Yeah, yeah. In my beginning of my career, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I worked with um, a lot of big companies. Um, and I, you know, I kind of missed the atmosphere of the whole brick and mortar, um, you know, team and the company culture of, uh, of a big organization and what they stand for and how they run a business, basically. Um, the comparison is, it's a little bit different, but I'm up to the challenge again and figuring out, um, how the smooth my way into back into the corporate culture got it yeah absolutely and then um you know you just you just started working with this other company so i'm curious kind of like it's it's been just a hot minute since you've been working there so do you uh, is there a reason that you're wanting to jump ship there um yeah you know it's cryptocurrency is um is like it's, you know, it's still a hot tamale. It's like ah, ah, this hand, this today, ah, it's this other hand tomorrow, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> to put it as something like that, you know, it's, you know, it, you know, and to me, it's, it's still in its infancy. And um, I'm tired of the yo yo. Um, you know, one day it's over here. One day it's over there, you know, and then the whole FTX thing, and you know, um, you know. So basically, I, I'm just a little bit um, frustrated. Burnt out on crypto. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, but not on Bitcoin though. Not on Bitcoin. I trust Bitcoin because um, I have Bitcoin. <laughs> I, I'm an early pioneer of Bitcoin. Um, so I invested in Bitcoin when it was like 2012 or something like that. Oh and man, you got in on the ground floor. Yeah, oh, yeah, so, um, so you gotta be into it. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have some passion and some, um, confidence that this is the right space, right? Yeah. This is it. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, I guess in layman terms, I, I'm still looking, um, like I want something where it's stable and I'm just tired of the yo-yo, um, you know, and the who to trust now, um, yeah. you know, and and now, it, you know, I think the protocol is going to change again. So yeah. um, I think it's as soon as it goes, Bitcoin goes up again to 60,000, I'm just going to sell it and enjoy it. The, the cash out so um but you know and the team is good but you know it's just you know the technology keeps changing so fast and um you know and no one knows anything about it except for a few people in the industry so yeah. um you know it's hard to like talk to someone outside San Francisco <laughs> that's, you know. It is very, it is very challenging. We've had lots of de debates at USC um, and most people like even myself, I was new to understanding crypto and just kind of the um, uh, 
and it's been fascinating to learn about it, but I didn't get it in on the ground floor. So I don't know that I would be interested in get, getting it now, but maybe this is still the, still a good time. I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So you, you ch talked a little bit about relationships um, uh, just a moment ago, but I'm curious. So we're a small company. We, we even though we've been around for 24 years, we are um, a group of 80 individuals, so not wow. huge. It's a, it's a smaller company um, based in Roseville, so far away from San Francisco. It's definitely a little bit different. Most of the workforce is remote and distributed around um, the U.S., so I'm curious um, how comfortable you feel working in a remote environment and then also, so working in a re remote environment and then also Kind of building collaborative relationships with a remote team how do you feel about that oh that's um that's perfect because i you know i always like visiting people um like to when i come to your city and stuff like that for lunch and getting to know you and that person um other than you know through remote you know how we are right now so yeah. um and the timelines are i think better since you know you cut out that um you know that morning time where you have to um commute to work um find lunch and stuff like that it's right in your kitchen you know <laughs> so um i i love the remote and we've been doing it since the pandemic since um so i i believe you get more work done um mm -hmm. so no one says that that you get actually <laughs> more work done because you know you cut out the commute you cut out getting lunch um you know and basically you um you're working longer hours than you will work in a you know uh, um in a in a building in the in a corporate office i believe um, because you want to get stuff done like maybe you are a night owl and you you do things um, at midnight until um, noon the next day and you know and then you rest and go on about your day and then you just repeat it the next time you know? or, or maybe you're always and to me you're always connected now um, with your phone on uh, your tablet, your laptop could travel with you at the park. <laughs> so, you know, um, there's kind of no escape working it, especially if you love your job um, like I do. And, um, and if you love figuring out solutions to problems and, and basically you are like in the workplace. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And then these last two questions, um, actually last three, I promise it's to, I don't know, this this is one of my longer interviews. Typically, oh, okay. <laughs> typically no it's, been, it's been fun connecting with you, that's yeah. all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so tell me about your hobbies. What do you like to do? Um, like, what can your hobbies tell me that your resume can't? Oh, my hobbies. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, um, I guess you could say, I, um, um, let me see. Oh, astrology. I, well, astro, um, taking pictures of space now. Like, I, I got into that hobby during the pandemic. Um, you know, with your camera and stuff like that, I learned how to take pictures of distant stars and solar systems. Um, you know, and, um, things about the solar system that I picked up during the pandemic because I was just so interested of like how did this happen like um and why and are we going to stay here long and stuff like that um as you know in California like oh man people were dying I was scared <laughs> yeah I was yeah. scared <laughs> I mean living let, let me tell you like living in the city during the pandemic we got out of there i would say uh i would say about six months in but those mm. six months were some of the most terrifying yeah of life like because you're so you're in such close quarters you don't know if you're gonna be you know yeah you're gonna die in a one-bedroom flat like yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, that's my life. Um, yeah, so it's it's definitely an interesting interesting thing. So that's that's a really interesting hobby. I'm I'm curious. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Google it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing it, and I've been following it, and I bought like an amateur camera. Um, and I've been taking pictures, although you have to, I wish I lived in Colorado because, you know, you need a really dark sky, um, with a lot of stars. So, and it's amazing the camera technology now, um, it's, it's very, very, um, advanced where it's, and if you think about it, it's only has been, um, 200 years into it, um, since 1888 Kodak was the first, you know, one, and now the where it, it is now, where you could actually, um, we, we kind of even don't even need the Hubble telescope. Um, where, like, I go onto these groups, and I was like, that's impossible. This has to be Adobe Photoshopped, you know? Right? And, <laughs> and they're taking pictures of it, and I was like, I got to get into this. So I've been doing yeah. that for a little bit, and it's really amazing what's out there. Wow, that's crazy. That's so, so interesting. Like I said, I'm definitely going to Google it. Um, and then last two questions. Uh, first one, uh, I noticed your comp that you added here was 90K. Is that um, accurate? an accurate range? Or tell me the range that you're looking for with well, regard to your next role. I think it was just something to put on paper. We could always negotiate in something, you know, um, uh, wherever the you know since it's remote, um, I'm um, really could negotiate something or work something out with you guys. I, I'm not too much, and I just put that down just because I I think it was in order to put something down you, in order to move forward. So in that. Well, I I will I will share. You have a ton of great experience, and I'll, I'm and and I'll, after after we're done with all the things, I will, I do want to kind of. I'll share with you that you're you're not at like the level that we have here is analyst and that's an end kind of an entry level position so definitely like brand new think just a couple years out of college you I would put you at a different category to be honest um and what rather than telling you that you're moving forward I'm going to connect with my with Lisa to figure out whether or not we want to put you in more of that mid to senior level consultant because frankly this is this particular role is a little bit below what um i would put you at i okay. like you have a ton of ex <laughs> great experience so yeah. <laughs> like 90k is low buddy yeah. like that's like like if if you're gonna be working in a company um you know it is it is a little low so i'm yeah. gonna give you a range um that's more closer and commensurate to your experience so um, let's keep let's keep the 90k at the bottom because you did add that add that number but it's just you have a lot of experience and you could come in and add a ton of value it's just trying to figure out that space um, where you fit within this space and I'm from tech I know tech I know yeah. those roles consulting I've been doing it for a year so I don't I don't have as much of the technical know-how when it comes to analytics and marketing mm -hmm. but that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on the hiring manager for this role and figure out okay we have you you ha you are a unicorn individual here like where would we put you because yeah. i loved our conversation i thought it was it was great you have both sides of the coin you can communicate with individuals and you can do the technical skills so that's where um you know finding finding your sweet spot right like yeah. finding your sweet spot like where what would be the right space for you here and if we have a role open i'm hoping that we have a role open that's at the level that you're at because i would hate for you to come in at this entry level position and have the wrong like people would have the wrong expectations if i put you at an analyst role like yeah yeah hmm, you, you've done the thing yeah you've built company, <laughs> like you've done the thing so i don't yeah. <laughs> i wouldn't put you at the in this particular role you have a lot more experience than this level would have, yeah. right? So with that in mind, we do have another opening that I'm recruiting for, and I need to go back and look at the job description a little bit more to see, and you can even go into, um, I'd love it if if you took a took a, uh, a moment and looked at the job descriptions that we have, yeah. and um, specifically for the consultant role, like 
I think we have a senior consultant role and we have another one that is a senior analyst role. That's mm. kind of a step above here because those two feel like mm. closer to where you're at. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so all that you've done great, great work in your career. You've done the thing. So that's, that's where I want to make sure that we, we get you in the right spot for this particular role. I think you're you're overqualified. You you yeah. have too much information. <laughs> but that doesn't mean yeah. that doesn't mean that we're not flexible to try and figure out if the next step up or the next two steps up might be an ideal fit for for the team. Because we're small, we can do that, okay. right? Um, we can kind of figure that out. Um, and there are other open roles right now, which is great, specifically yeah. in Martech. So it's it's good. You're coming in at a good time where yeah. we're able to kind of say like, hey. Where can we plug and play with <laughs> some of the <laughs> like where can the, this person you know like <laughs> like <laughs> jesse was amazing but not not for this role but the next role so you know that's that's yeah. a that's a challenge i'm, I'm going to take on last thing that i want to i'm curious about when you go you know what do you want to do for the next in the next two to five years um <clears throat> i probably um want to help like like build like a um, my technology know-how into something that is like a um, leadership like person within that industry um, and basically um, I guess hopefully like st start a um, new trend where everyone's following it and I'm above, like I'm the leader of that, um, that entity basically. Um, Cause I know there's tons of like um, creativity out there, but people don't basically have that know-how of certain technologies. And like I have, like I go over so many technologies per day because of my uh, analytic background. Well, I use predictive analytics. Um, I mm. learned how to predict the future, uh, and some <laughs> I could. Um, it's one of my little like hobbies too. Like I predict. Got it. Because you're you're a futurist. Like yeah. if you invested in Bitcoin, you're a futurist. <laughs> like you 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 are banking on certain things in the future, and it's based on. And if yeah. you, it makes total sense that you're doing predictive analytics there. Or, or that you're interested in that, in that and you and you run is it modeling or yes yes I I figure out things um, and come up with a conclusion of how they're gonna turn out um, and I try to follow the trail and basically um, and hopefully there's something at the end of that where I can make a lot of money and um, and I believe you know the metaverse that a lot of people um put like a bad taste of the metaverse because they wanted metaverse. something really quickly but zuckerberg put so much money into it like so where did that money go to they had to go into something and then you know and then i read about the metaverse of what they're still doing about it and i believe that facebook is not going to figure out it's going to be another entity that will figure it out so yeah. things yeah. of that nature, I want to be on top of it, like how I was on top of the Bitcoin thing. And they're also going to have their own coin system in the metaverse. So a hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. So I'm all about it. I'm right there. <laughs> I'm on that train with you. So, um, you know, when we're, we're in my master's program, we're um, uh, developing different products. And so, you know, that's, that's my side life. This is my current life, right? Like you have to have your current and sometimes